Hey there, JKJ Digital Assets Premium members. Today, we wanna to talk about the inevitable. We wanna talk about the thing that all of us hate to talk about. It's tax time. <laughs> what we've got for you today is we have put together a pretty good little PowerPoint that we think has got a lot of pertinent information. Uh, John is, does, a fa does a fantastic job and he's put together lots and lots of information. We're gonna show you some different forms, just some different things that you'll need to know to navigate your way through tax season. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna launch into this. We've got a few questions that we're gonna go back and forth with as we start to do this, but we're just gonna kind of walk our way through. Hopefully you'll find some information that'll be helpful. So John, what have you put together for us today? So we got a three part series on taxes. We're going to take it like baby steps all the way through to running and talk about all the different, you know, aspects that you need to be aware of with your taxes. The, the big thing, you know, with the financial advisory, uh, what we need to be aware of that we're not offering tax advice. Like that's not what this is. What we'd like to do is just arm you for your conversation with your tax professional. You know, the, these are not tax tactics. They're not techniques. They're not rules. They're just letting you be aware when you make trades and everything, when you go to your tax accountant or your whoever, that you can have a logical conversation with that person. So um, go ahead and move on to the next thing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's as long as the tax person that you're going to understands cryptocurrency, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I mean that's a great that's a great observation, but the the principles behind this are not really crypto. There's a couple things that are crypto centric, but most of them are centered around property. So you know we talk about exchanging uh, cryptocurrencies, but it would be as if like I walked up and handed you a, bro a brick of gold. You know, here's a three thousand dollar chunk of gold. You just received an asset at that moment, and you would be expected technically to report that income. And then if you sold it, you know, for cash, that, you know, that would be a, an ass, a gain that was realized. So it's all of these are, these principles are founded already. So it's applying them to crypto. I mean, the tax person may not know that, but they're, right. they're all out there. It's all tax code that's been in effect for years and years. So it just has to be applied to the crypto world. And uh, so we're going to do that in these three step or in these three uh, podcasts that we're going to do about taxes. So uh go ahead and over to the thing the, the big the big deal is that people think that um crypto is not going to be taxable or they're <laughs> they want to avoid the taxes and all that stuff uh believe me if you do not report whatever your income or gains or whatever uh, not that it's going to happen but the federal government will have an avenue to come after you if they ever find out that's debatable how they would find out but uh, every, almost every transaction will cause a tax event. And I say almost, and we'll talk about some exceptions at the end of this, but almost every one of them will create a tax event and tax events are reportable to the IRS, just like every other income or investment that you have. It's, you are, you are responsible for it. And a lot of times you're responsible to bring the pertinent information to the table. Exactly. Too. Yeah. They um, expect you to pony up with info. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and click next. All right, so just get some of the you know nitnoy details out of the way. So if you'd like to go and look these up and uh, become familiar with them, this is all like the guiding principles. There's an IRS notice that they put out in 2014, you know, specifically regarding uh, crypto and cryptocurrency. Um, and then there's a you can go to their frequently asked questions page at the IRS.gov also. Uh, the rest of this stuff is all general purpose IRS materials out there. Sales and disposition of assets, cost basis things. We'll, we'll have copies of all this on our website that you can pull up. Uh, this PowerPoint is gonna be on our website if you wanna pull it up in your own time and go and read all those things. Again, the understanding this material is gonna arm you for your conversation with your tax professional. So, you know, go ahead and familiarize with those and, and read them. So yeah. I put together some particulars out of those things that are important. Uh, the first one is that transactions using virtual currency must be reported in U.S. dollars. Why I brought this up is that you may not always, you can create a tax event and not have U.S. dollars sitting in front of you. So, but it's reportable to the IRS in dollars. So you're going to have to make that um conversion over to from crypto to dollars and we'll, we'll talk about that in here uh, and it's up to you go back one more it's up to you to determine the fair market value of a crypto and whatever the exchange listing coin gecko or any of those kind of things they are suitable for your cost or for your fair market value of a crypto um, so from the irs frequently asked questions um, 
it, this is just like every other uh, capital asset is the words that they use. Uh, you, you short term, if you hold it for one year or less, it's a short term capital asset. If you hold it for a year or longer, it's a long term capital asset. So you'll be subject to gains or losses. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, if you have a huge loss in crypto, you can use that to your tax advantage. So uh, just like a, a gain or a loss. So go ahead and clean that. All right, so when you're talking about cryptocurrency, uh, they can be taxed as an income or they can be taxed as an asset. So, and sometimes they'll be taxed as both. So an income is like if you, you know, there are companies out there that pay, that will pay you in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or something mm -hmm. like that. So if you, uh, if you have income from a cryptocurrency that's taxed differently it's taxed like regular income and again you need to get the fair market value of it and this is just like any rewards that i get on my coinbase.com card or any or my cro that i accrued on my crypto.com card exactly. that that's all what that is yeah okay. that's all regular income all right so uh the other thing is a capital uh, is a capital gain or loss from a sale or exchange of crypto um uh, hey look <laughs> Uh, so if you exchange uh, digital assets to U.S. dollars, mm -hmm. uh, but the, this is the tricky part is that you can exchange from a crypto to a crypto uh, that, and that can also create a tax event. So, I mean, if you if I give you a three thousand dollar brick of gold and you hold it and, you know, two weeks later that gains in value and then you trade it with your buddy for a, gold, a block, of, block of silver. Mm hmm you know, there could be a tax event there because of the gains that you saw in gold before you traded out for silver. That's right. always my analogy for it. So, um, and then the rewards and airdrops can also, any gains on those, we're going to talk specifically about okay. those along the way, but any gains you get from those are taxable. All right, go ahead. All right, so some, I wanted to point out some of the forms that you may see. Um, this one is your standard issue 1099B. You might get this. This is the form that a company or an exchange or somebody like that will use to tell the IRS what your gains are. Uh, so this isn't coming, you will get a copy of this, but this is Coinbase or crypto.com or whoever reporting to the federal government that you made this okay. um, exchange. So, uh, and the thing is that the companies right now may or may not send you that form. It, it may show up, it may never show up. So, but you're still responsible for the information. <laughs> so go ahead and click to the next slide. All right, this form, the 8949 form, uh, this is the one where you are reporting to the federal government, whatever your gains are. And I put a highlight on there, the short-term gain is one year or less. The next section down, I couldn't fit the whole form on there, but the next section down is the long-term gain section. So, uh, but this comes from you. And it's telling the federal government what your activity has been this year. So, um, and that you could do both if somebody, and we're going to talk about this, but your 1099B may come to you in error. So, and you can either pen and ink correct it and send it back with your taxes or you, and, or you can fill out this 8949 and tell them what the actual information is on there. So, uh, this is your vehicle. And by to that, tell. you mean your cost basis. Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. Okay. And we're going to go through that in great All detail right. and I'll show you that for sure. All right, go ahead to the next slide. All right, so the way we're going to demonstrate this stuff is go through some, um, I'm calling them case study, case studies on here. There's four of them and they'll go from simple to complex. So this first one, case study one, I'm calling a simple buy and sell. So you're going to buy a crypto and then someday in the future, you're going to mm. sell it and we'll demonstrate the, the, um, ramifications on here. So on case study one, simple buy and sell. The first thing is we're going to buy, uh, on January 1st, Ethereum is at $3,000 and we're going to buy one Ethereum and incur $40 in fees. So the cost basis in this, as JD was alluding to, the cost basis is $3,040, uh, where the fair market value of Ethereum in that moment is $3,000. So just set the, set the scene here a little bit. We'll go ahead and click to the next one. So like, I want to start to just populate these forms for you as we go through. So at this point on the 8949 form, you have Ethereum, you bought it on January 1st, and there's a column there for your cost basis of $3,040. All 
All right, so if we fast forward the clock for a month and um, happy day, Ethereum is now at $3,500. And you're going to sell that one Ethereum for $3,500 and you're going to incur another $40 in fees to accomplish that. So I'm showing you the math right here. The fair market value is $3,500. You subtract out the fees you did and your proceeds, and I'm using that word very specifically because that's what the government's looking for. Your proceeds are $3,460. So click forward once. All right, so back to our form where we're populating the information. The new information hung here is that we sold it on 1 February. Our proceeds, you can see there in the column, our gains on this are $420. If you just subtract it out, it's $420 worth of gains. So we've populated this form. This is what you would send off to the IRS with your tax attorney and report your activity. So, and again, it's, it's good to point out, this is something that your accountant this should, or your tax attorney, this should not be foreign to them. Just because we're talking crypto, this would be the same thing if you had bought General Electric stock or exactly. something like that, any, any kind of old stock. It's the same exact principle. There's nothing specific to crypto that doesn't apply to any other investment here. Precisely. Okay. Yep. All right. So click next and um, all right. So I just kind of wanted to summarize this a little bit better, not on the form. So I did it backwards because the the concept here is proceeds minus cost basis equals your reportable. So our proceeds were thirty four hundred sixty dollars. The cost basis was three thousand and forty, and the math leaves us with four hundred twenty dollars worth of of gain that we had that's reportable to the IRS. All right, and with this, again, I, you may or may not get any forms from whatever exchange that you happen to use for this. They may send you something, they may not. Last year, I got a pile of 8949s from one of the exchanges, which it's, you know, they I guess they were just doing me a solid by <laughs> pre-populating that, but the information was even wrong in there so oh, well wow. yeah they sent me a bunch of forms it was wrong I, you know i threw them away i told you not to be trading man i, know. <laughs> I told you to hold on to it yeah <laughs> keep everything <laughs> all right so uh, that was a pretty simple scenario case study one is pretty straightforward yeah i even followed along on that one okay yeah so all right so case study number two we're going to get a little more complex and i'm trying to demonstrate where a place that you can get tripped up with this so this one is a buy move sell so you're going to buy a crypto in one place, move it to somewhere else, and then liquidate it at that point. And uh, so I'm going to keep the numbers pretty similar so you can see the comparisons between the two. Uh, again, on January 1st, Ethereum is $3,000. You are in crypto.com at this point, and you purchase one Ethereum, and you incur $40 in fees. Same, same scenario, same cost basis, same uh, fair market value. Go ahead and click to the next one. All right, so on January 2nd, you want to send your Ethereum to BlockFi. I don't know why, but you can do that. So you send it off to BlockFi. Uh, the value of Ethereum has jumped $50 over the night, and you incur $25 in fees to ship that over to BlockFi. So right now at this point, there's been no tax event. Nothing has occurred. Uh, you haven't sold anything or liquidated anything, uh, but you did have the $25 in fees. Those fees to make that transfer are effectively lost. They're not tax deductible. They're just, that's, you just chose to send your stuff around and you lose that $25. Okay. Uh, the important thing to take away is that, that the tax basis information is back in crypto.com in this scenario. Like BlockFi has no clue what your tax basis is. They don't, they don't know. So go ahead and click next. Because you didn't purchase it there. All you're doing is storing it there. So they yes. don't have that kind of information. Yes, definitely. All right. Exactly. The tax basis doesn't travel through the Ethereum network over to block. Okay. Makes sense. So, all right. So, uh, same maneuver. We're going to sell it now. So on one February, again, Ethereum is at $3,500 and we sell it and incur $40 in fees. So, same same situation, same proceeds, same fair market values, the last case study. I'll go ahead and click next. All right, so now here's we're back to our 8949. So you may get this 8949 and the information is missing. And you can see here because with the information is missing, they think that your cost basis is the thirty four hundred and sixty dollars the day it arrived? Yeah, because they don't. Yeah, they don't know that yeah. you what your purchase price was or anything. So you may get this form 
that shows you made thirty four hundred sixty dollars and you know you didn't really make that much money but that's what they report go ahead and click next on that one and here's a 1099b this could you know they could report this transaction to the government uh in a if the biden administration gets their way and these people are required to report this might hit the irs the irs might walk away from this transaction thinking you made thirty four hundred dollars when you didn't make all that money uh the the good thing is at the top of that form there's a little block that says corrected that's your opportunity to do a pen and ink change to it and send that in with your taxes so you have a vehicle to tell them your vehicle is to hit that corrected button or and do it and write it in there or do an 8949 that is correct and send that in but you have to be very aware of this stuff because they will sling you around by the nose and tell the irs that you made a bunch of money that you didn't so and this is all your tax professional should be guiding you through all of this kind of stuff and letting you know with these forms whether with, with doing that self-correction your your tax professional is the one that's going to tell you if you need to do that definitely all right so summarizing uh case study number two our buy move sell uh and it looks very similar you know we the proceeds were 3460 dollars uh the fees of 25 dollars to transfer uh, our net or reportable from that is $420. Uh, let's do one more click. So the, I just wanted to highlight out here that you are, that's not your real profit on this. Your real profit is $395. That has nothing to do with the IRS or taxes, but you know, if you move that money around and that $25 is really lost, it's just cost that goes out the window. So you know, you probably should limit the amount of hopping around you do because it will burn through your um, profit very quickly. So one more click. All right, so wrapping this up, uh, some of the, the takeaways that I want to talk about uh, the attack. These details are your responsibility. The, the company that you're using, BlockFi, in, this, in my example here, they may not have a clue. They're not trying to be nefarious. They're not, they just don't have the information. Uh, and there may be a day in the future where they're required to report something, you know, to be mm -hmm. compliant with the government. So, but it's all, it's your responsibility to keep up with that information. So, uh, I, I recommend that you keep track of your cost basis. Uh, it, you know, like we demonstrated, it might be back in the original exchange that you purchased that crypto in. So, uh, I don't know how, um, you know you're going to keep track of it some people like to write it down there's we're going to talk about in the third podcast in the series we'll talk about some uh, online resources you have to track this stuff so well, let me ask you a question something sure. i deal with because i do a, a lot of trading back and forth and yeah. one of the problems i'm having is uh, when, when i look at the uh, when you buy a stock you have a first in first out first in last out yeah. option mm -hmm. here if i have a my wallet at crypto.com and let's say i have four ethereum that i bought over the space of let's say four months right and i send one ethereum to blockfi let's say how do i know what my cost base is i'm going to mark over at blockfi is if i if i don't have that option inside of crypto.com to pick which ethereum i want to send i mean how do we do this yeah that's um that is where crypto trading can get really complex and the your question about uh first in first out or last in last out it, the 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 rule is that you have to keep one technique for the whole thing if you do first in first out you have to do that for all your transactions on that ethereum mm -hmm. um if you do the first in last out you have to do that across the whole thing you can't because there is a way that you could massage that to be a gain for you and the irs if you were ta not talking about crypto if you were talking about any kind of accounting it's the same thing you have to pick one and go with it you can't like you know for the first half of your ethereum that you're <laughs> you, you know you do fifo and the, the last half you do you know you can't game the thing up to to your gain you have to pick one style of accounting and stick with it the whole way through and your account this is stuff that your accountant will tell you they yeah. know this it's not new news to them they know this across the board i mean if you have a, a business that holds inventory if you if you make widgets and hold widgets in your warehouse and you're selling them and making them and you would do the same thing your yeah. inventory method would be one or the other you know first in first out first in last out it would they they just want you to pick one way and go with it uh, but to your point um it 
it really behooves you to keep it simple enough where you don't get distracted. Like one of the things that we talk about all the time is that if you're going to use Ethereum, uh, we're going to talk about this in another in the next podcast. But if you're going to use Ethereum to buy another crypto with, you know, make it a clean transaction, purchase the Ethereum, move it, purchase the next crypto with it all within moments. And then there's not a big uh, tax basis problem or you don't have a the your first in first out problem you just it's like boom 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 all within minutes of each other and there's that limits the ramifications of it right and that that just falls into a technique thing you know how what's your technique of approaching this stuff if you just have say you got ten thousand bucks sitting there and you want to buy ethereum you go buy ten thousand dollars worth of ethereum and you just start whittling away and you're making $500 purchases every week off of that 10 grand, Let's just say for example, that's gonna get super complex. Right. Is it, can you overcome the complexities? Sure, you can, you know, it's gonna be a longer conversation with your tax accountant, but you can do it. Is that a good technique to keep things simple? Probably not, you know, is it how you choose to move through your transactions? That's, it's fine if that's what you choose, but one of the reasons we're bringing this up now is so that before you get too deep into it, you can take measures to keep it simple enough so that you can keep track of it along right. the way. Right, and, that, and that's a great, great, great point. I mean, when I started this whole thing, one of my first cryptocurrencies was Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And so you sit there and okay, okay, I got five of these, I got six, seven, eight. Yeah. Now I want to go buy something else. And guess what? Over at MetaMask, you got you have to use Ethereum to buy. So mm -hmm. you take something out of your pot, you send it the other direction, and let's say now you got five or six tokens, and you have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean that's where I started up until the point where I figured, you know, wait a minute. Let's keep this clean. Yeah, exactly. And and in there is is a, a gem for you. There's a big tip for you as you head down this road is keep them clean and that way you keep track of what you're doing that's well it's a matter of just being organized and being methodical with what you're doing yeah. so well, that's that that's a great point and that's that's kind of how we how we need to go about this yeah well come back for the number three on this series at least because we'll talk about some of the online resources you can do out there there's many of them uh, most of them are free until you start pulling data out of them <laughs> so but we'll, we'll get into that yeah further all right well hey Again, our JKJ Digital Assets Premium members, we so appreciate you. We so appreciate that you've taken the time, you've taken the effort, and you've invested with us. And we're here for you. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Again, please remember we are not tax professionals. We are only providing some general information, trying to give you something that you can take to your tax professional and your tax advisor so that y'all can have intelligent conversations about what's going on with this you know a little bit going into it to help guide your tax professional who may not have experienced this before so again thanks for being here with us thank you so much for for being that for being a premium member and folks we'll talk to you next time come back and see us again for the next tax presentation